Have you ever wondered what it would look like if you step back in time to back to the early 1700s to the first town of North Carolina? Well, stick around and explore with me the city and town of Bath. Welcome back to the Fairly Wicked Adventures channel. I'm Matt, and today I'm in Bath, North Carolina, here in Beaufort County, right off of the Pamlico River. This town was established and in, in chartered in 1705 as the first town in North Carolina. It was also the first uh, state capital and the first port of entry. Who said? Who couldn't? Who said that this would have not been a perfect place to have a port or a capital? I mean, you got water leading out to the to the ocean. You have so many streams, creeks throughout here. It is just not just being right next to the water. Easy access to get on and in and out of the ocean coming from England. England at the time. But there was a certain name that's accumulated with Bath. His name is Edward Teach. Everybody knows him as Blackbeard. This was his home. There's a whole lot of controversy of where his actual home is. But as you saw in the in in, in the beginning, his name's sitting right there on that plaque. His name, the home of Bat Bath, the home of Blackbeard, is on every one of these light poles, which are technically look like they're still lost in time because they're back in his time. It looks like old propane or old lanterns and stuff. But let me give you a little bit of background that I know of and that of this town. It was encharted in 1705 by the name, founded by the name, by the guy, man named John Lawson. John Lawson from England comes over here and makes a beautiful town. It sits on a, on less than a square mile, and it was actually here for the port of for a port, be the first port in all that. On top of all that, they all uh, bath this port was for naval stores, furs, tobacco, a whole bunch of just this is a trading spot. This was this was the actual trading spot back in 17 back in those times. That was a big deal and that was everything you need everything that needed to happen. It's a beautiful little town. We come here a lot. We've came here a lot so far, just to get the familiar with it. Um, I've been here, I was here one time, just driving through. Didn't even know what it was until we crossed over the bridges to get on to the, to the peninsula. My wife, she's never been here. And her first, her first time being here was, wow, this place is awesome. It's, it's like you step back in time literally step back in time for 300 years literally 300 years this town has not changed it's full and rich of history and we're going to go through and do a, uh, we're going to go see most of the main hot spots historical hot spots of this what this town has to offer not to mention just the pure amazement and beauty, beauty that this town has in front of you. So, stick with us. I hope you enjoy this. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leave me a comment and share this with everybody who loves history and will love to come and visit a piece of American and North Carolina history. When you 
come to the waterfront here in Bath, one of the first houses you'll see is this house. This house is called the Bonner House. And it's an actually a replica of what you would see in the 1830s. It's actually a museum. Can't really go inside because there's no one here and, it's, and the door is not open as you can tell. But we can walk around the property and there's a garden in the back. Old school garden in the back that actually would represent a flower garden, a walk path and everything that you can actually go see and this is what they would have had at their house. So if you follow me and I'll show you exactly what it is. So as you can tell this is the Bonner house. The Bonner house is a two-story house and it was built in, it was built in the 1830s by the Bonner family. This property that they, um, this house is built on is actually the same property that John Lawson the founder of Bath had, and this is his. This is his house. This was this was his property. And you had the kitchen house over here on on the property. That was where I mean that's where the kitchen. You couldn't have the kitchen inside the house back in times because of all the heat and fire, the capable of fires, old grapevines coming in through. I mean, that's some, that's some old stuff, and if you, there's a plaque down here that tells you it's the old grapevine, for the gra old grapevines and everything, and this is just a beautiful thing. Now, you had a watershed. You turn around, of course, they made it into a museum, so there's heat and AC now. Back in time, they wouldn't have heat and AC. It was mostly candlelight and everything. Big, big backyard. In a beautiful front uh, water view, as you can tell, it's, it's a, it is just an amazing piece of property. If you walk back here and through here, you have little plaques of what these other of how, how everything is since it's a museum. But then you have this: you have a hedge garden. You have a garden full of what everybody would have had back in those times and everything. Old school sundial, as you can tell, and then it, it just keeps on going back and forth over there. So, I mean, it's typical, it's, it's beautiful, it's majestic, and this is what you, this right here is what you would have seen back in the 1830s. But we're gonna actually get to a pl uh, get get to a place that actually dates back farther than 1830s. So, uh, so. I hope y'all enjoy it. If y'all like it, y'all can actually come here. They actually have tours of the house on um, through the you know, through the um, history history society of this house and mostly everything that de that comes with bath itself. There's historical baths, and of course we're in December, and we're about a couple of weeks away from Christmas. So they, of course, they have the um, Christmas decorations and the garland and everything so <laughs> I love these architecture the two story white I mean brick foundation the whole nine yards this is it's just a beautiful piece of work our next stop on the list is called St. Thomas Church it is the oldest surviving church in the state of North Carolina. It was built in 1734 and it is just fantastic. Literally fantastic. I mean, for a church to be in that this old and they still have services on Sundays, it's fan it, it, it's unbelievable I mean you have literally everything you need who's been sitting here it's the it's, it's an Episcopal old uh, the Episcopal church it's the oldest church building in the state of North Carolina and it was constructed in in 13 in 1734 now how many people can actually say that their church is older than that or even close even I mean Bath is, Bath is, uh, 
Bass has got a lot going for it, and it's, uh, I mean, it's, I mean, it's literally, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's the oldest town, and it's a whole lot of history here, and you, like, when you come over the bridge, and you come and step foot on this land, you can feel the history, you can feel how it means everything, and it's just, it's so cool, so, I mean, just check it out, I mean, it literally, it's, an old, an old church. Gra graves in the front, like you'll see everything else, but these are some old, old stuff. And, I mean, you're not too far from the water, as you can tell. And, I mean, there's... Statues of the little buildings. They, they did some remodel, oh, trust me. They've done them some work. Of course, that's not the original roof and everything, but it's... It's an amazing, it's an amazing, amazing place. I mean, it's just. It's an, I mean, look at look at the architecture. It looks as how it was back in the seventeen early seventeen hundreds, seventeen thirties. It's awesome. And this is the Palmer Marsh House. This is one of the oldest residences in the state of North Carolina. It's built in 1744 by Michael Connage. And he used the western room, the large western room for his shop. And of course he had his house and his living quarters up top. This western room, of course, like I said, was his, was his shop. But it also held the colonial, uh, colonial party whenever they came here in Bath since this was the natural capital back in time whenever everything this I mean this was their headquarters. But I mean it's fantastic. So here is the Palmer House. Palmer Marsh House. It's two story upstairs will most likely be where your residence is and downstairs is where the the actual banquet hall and the in the shops and stuff for if you can walk around like, of course they turn it into a museum so it's new now heat and AC um I mean it's just it's a beautiful 1744 building they're decorated with Christmas it's actually two and a half stories if you really want to look at it give you an example this is just a preview of what you would see is old well there is old build old little house building over there most likely they're gonna be the kitchen area um downstairs basement looks like and then you have an old graveyard i mean like i said it's 1744 what do you expect there are graves all over the place um it's it's just beautiful i can't and you, can't, you can take a tour you can take a tour of this place just if you ever plan on coming to bath and do some history like i'm a history buff and if you're a history buff, you will enjoy this place because it's full of history. The uh, Bath Historical Society, which is right down the road, literally, like right, right there. You can go in there, set up times for history tours of any of their historical places, and they'll probably set some time. You can go in there and check it out. Like I said, there's the Palmer Marsh House. The old, one of the oldest residence, residence um, buildings still standing here in the state of North Carolina. Beautiful, just straight beautiful. And one of the last ones on the historical places, giving you an exact preview, is the old school. It was built in the 1900s, but it was 1920s. It was built in uh, 1918, somewhere around there. 1918, 1920, somewhere around that area. This school right here was uh, built in four, four different sections. And then there's an elementary school on the other side, which is more modern. And so, I mean, you got to think. Yeah, every town's got to have a school. Well, this is technically the high school. Elementary school is on the other side, but the elementary school is K to eight. This is high school. This is no longer in, this is no longer the high school since they have 
north side, right down the road. And then of course on the other side of the county is south side. But now, this is actually considered the ex ex exhibit center, the historic Bath exhibit center, but this was the high school. The library is right next door, and if you turn around, that right there is actually the entrance to the visitor center for old historic Bath. So this is where you, this right here is where you will go if you would, uh, you come here to visit and do some, do some tour and, and try and do all, and go from there. So I hope y'all enjoyed it. And I mean, come over here and check this place out. So that's Bath in a nutshell. I mean, there's a whole lot more areas you can call, you can cover and look and explore around here. I'm out, and it's a beautiful site. I'm just over here sitting on the water. I mean, you can literally see I'm sitting here at the water with, there's the Bonner house right there. I hope, now, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Remember, hit that like, hit that like button, that subscribe button, leave a comment, share this video with people who, with somebody who you think will enjoy coming to see Bath. And if you're wondering, where, where everybody's going to ask, where are you going? Just tell them. I'm going to go hang out with Blackbeard for a while. You won't regret it. Speaking of Blackbeard, he technically is supposed to live right over there. That's where his house was supposed to be at, on that point way over there. And from where I'm sitting to the mouth of the, of the river, it's technically one mile. Which makes you think, what else is this, this town actually hiding? Why is it so mysterious in a way? It's beautiful. Check. Mysterious? Old? It comes with the territory. It's giving you a little bird's eye view. There's Bonner Point. It's a beautiful place. It's actually one of the most part, parts of here. I mean, old, old um, towns. Houses all over the place. And with houses all over the place, you can actually drive around this town. And there's lots for sale everywhere. There's new construction on this other side over here on King Street. This is Main Street and King Street. And where the church is at is, is Craven. Carteret is the Main Street coming in, which is technically Highway 92. Anyways, like I said, wa um, Bath is technically in between Washington and Bellhaven. If you know any place like that, it's in the little Washington, Bellhaven area here in Buford County, central Buford County. You're 15 miles from Washington and about 18 miles from Bellhaven, and you're about 37 miles from, from outside of Greenville. So it's not really that far of a drive if, you're look, if you really look at it. And you're in the, right here in the heart stop of literally history in a town, a sleepy town that never really grew past John Lawson's original plans for this. Mostly because of all, because the textile mill industries and the actual railroads that went to the Piedmont. That's Hence, Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill, Greensboro, Winston-Salem, and so on and so forth. Not including Charlotte. You gotta remember, where you're standing at. This place. The first town. First established in, on chartered town in the state of North Carolina. Without this place, none of those would actually would have happened. Think about it. Even though that this place, this town, was actually disturbed through a epidemic, yellow fever, a drought in, in, in uh, 1711, or around 1711, you had piracy. Think about Blackbeard and his and all those notorious golly whoppers. You had a uh, Carey's Rebellion going on. I mean, Thomas Carey, the actual de deputy uh, governor at the time. And, and you had the, the, the fight between the, uh, the Church of England and the Quaker party. You had the Tuscarora War that, that was going on here. I mean, there was so much stuff going on that it was just, it just held them back a little bit. But now, 
I read that this was now supposed to be like a retirement place or a second home place. But why is that? There's 250 residents in this town. Literally, in this town, it's 250 residents. And it could be a whole, whole lot more because there are so much land for sale. And there's so many lots for sale that you can build a house. You can put a house here right next to the water. And I have friends who actually lived here. And they says that I mean, her, as many hurricanes come through, and you're right here on the river, which is maybe it was 8 to 10 miles off of, the, off of the sound, you would think the storm surge would get this place. Nope. You're 13 feet above sea level. Literally 13 feet above sea level, even though the water is right there. So why is this place not growing? Is it, is it because of how old it is and maybe there's, a, there's tales of ghost stories or folklore or folk tales that are holding this place back? Don't really know. I know I would love to live here. There's not much that this town can offer job-wise. But there are modern amenities. There's restaurants, there's tours, you have plenty of boating if you really want to. There's no one out there now because it's just cold. And you're in the middle of December, in the middle of the week. So, you take your guess. Make sure that, I mean, if you feel like you want to see this place for, for yourself, come on down. I know these people will be happy to see that, uh, to, to see you come in and talk to you and give you a little bit more history about this town, about their town than I can but I like coming here it's peaceful you can sit right there literally you can sit right there and look out there and just melt, melt the day away a hard day's work away, you can melt it away come here and hang out with Blackbeard I know he's just, this was his favorite spot. This was his favorite spot to hang out. And then he did semi-retire here. Had his wife and his children. Both named Elizabeth, by the way. I did my research on him, too. And hopefully there's a... There is, hopefully there is a uh, series... That we're planning, I'm planning on doing, or we're, we're planning on doing, is trying to find everything about him. Step one is this place. Other ones, yeah, you never know. But like I said, hope you enjoyed it. Come meet, come hang out with Blackbeard. And stay active, stay adventurous. Oh yeah, by the way, if y'all are just wondering. What kind of restaurants there are, that were here, or what kind of modern amenities these, this place has? There's there's but um Blackbeard's Tavern, which is a pizza place. It has cheese steaks, pizzas, wings. There's actually a, a bar down there. It is right off the cut, right off the water here. It's this old southern, old country kitchen, which is southern foods. There is a there is the Duke and Duchess um, coffee shop. Which is right over there. And for for shopping, you have all these hometown shops. And you also have a family dollar and everything else. But like I said, you're not too far from Washington. You're not too far from Greenville. And you're definitely not too far from Bellhaven. So come check this place out. Music